So moving on with this quantum mechanics calculation, we've now found the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian for our spin-spin interaction, uh, for the spin-spin interaction of two spin and a half particles. Uh, for example, the classic example is the hydrogen atom, a proton and an electron, each spin one half, where they have an interaction between their spins that give a positive energy when they're pointing in the same direction and a negative energy when they're pointing opposite directions. We've got this, and we want to know what are the energy eigenstates. We've already calculated in a previous example how to do, how to get this matrix, where this matrix came from. We already talked about this basis. Now we have the matrix. The essential question we always ask is, what are the energy eigenvalues? What are the energy states, the energy eigenstates that make this, uh, that leave us in stationary states of this Hamiltonian? As we've seen before, finding the energy eigenstates of a system is the whole game if you want to find out how the system evolves with time. So, well, we have a matrix. Deal is, this is actually nothing but linear algebra at this stage. There, there's, there's practically nothing to it except for linear algebra. Looking at this matrix, we're just supposed to ask, what are the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix? And, well, actually, I, there, there are lots of long ways we could go about this. There, there are lots of things we could say. But, honestly, the, the sneaky thing I want to put into this is we can do most of the work just in our heads. So, for example, any time you have a matrix where you have an entry on the diagonal with all zeros in its row and column corresponding to that entry, that is an eigenvalue. And one of the eigenvectors is just the, in this case, 1, 0, 0, 0, the vector that multiplies that and it kills the rest of the matrix. So uh, I can immediately say that I know some eigenvectors of this matrix. One of the eigenvectors, as I just said, is 1, 0, 0, 0. And that has eigenvalue plus a over 2. Another eigenvector, hopefully you can spot it yourself in just an instant, looking at this, say, by the same principle, I have another entry that's on the diagonal and has all zeros in its row and column. A over 2 is another one for also the eigenvalue for 0, 0, 0, 1. That also has plus A over 2 as an eigenvalue. So those two eigenvectors come for free, basically, just looking at the matrix. Now, the nice thing about that is that all I'm left with, because these were their own eigenvectors, because of all those zeros, this is easy stuff. What we're left with is just essentially a 2 by 2 matrix in the middle. Once you know that this is an eigenvector and it's all zeros, you can basically ignore the top row and first column. Once you know what this is, bottom row and last column you can ignore. And so we want to know what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of minus a over 2, a, a, minus a over 2. I want to know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix. OK, there are lots of ways of doing this. If you are experienced and good at linear algebra stuff, you may be able to squint at this and immediately spot two more eigenvectors and get the eigenvalues just like that. Uh, in fact, if you're really clever and you have experience with uh, quantum mechanics and physics and things, you may use symmetry and already guess what you should spot, and that may lead you to be able to guess what the eigenvectors are here. Uh, symmetry, right? We, we like symmetry in physics, and symmetry, in my mind, means either the two things are the same, that's a nice symmetric case, or they're anti-same, they're one is one way, one is the other. Uh, you know, and so yeah, we'll see where that comes from. We're going to be really brute force and just go through and work out what the eigenvalues are, just to do a little linear algebra practice, basically. But we're going to do that. To work out the eigenvalues, remember, we subtract from this e times 1, 0, 0, 1. We're just subtracting where e is going to stand in for our energy eigenvalue. Lots of e's there. So we're going to do the subtraction, and we're going to take the determinant of the whole thing and set it equal to zero, and that, that's our characteristic polynomial. That tells us, that's how we find the eigenvalues, is we use e as an unknown and solve this. So let's work this out. This means, uh, in other words, this is, uh, what is this? Minus a over 2 minus e a a minus a over 2 minus e determinant. And that's not a bad determinant to deal with, really, because this is minus a over 2 minus e squared minus a squared. And we can oh, 
pluses instead of minuses because we, it's a squared, so we can get rid of that. And so this is e squared. Cross term is plus a times e plus a squared over 4 minus a squared. Or in other words, e squared plus a times e minus 3a squared over 4. And again, that equals 0. E is my unknown. And this is just a quadratic. Anyone can solve a quadratic equation. There's nothing, nothing complicated about it. Uh, squinting at it, I can look at this and say, oh, I know that, my, uh, I, I, know that I could have done uh, that the sum of my two eigenvalues has to add up to, I guess, minus a. And the product of the two has to give me minus 3a squared over 4. Uh, you can solve this any way you like. You'll find that the solutions are e equals a over 2 and minus 3a over 2. The sum adds up to minus a. The product ends up uh, being 3a squared over 4, just as we wanted. And this pen seems to be having some issues, so maybe we'll switch. So I have my two additional eigenvalues. And I can work out, then, what eigenvectors give me those eigenvalues. And I'll uh, just erase some stuff over here. Why not? Alas, poor matrix. I know. I'll just put this up here. OK. We'll kill that matrix eventually, but got to do something. So all right, I've worked out these eigenvalues. Let's work out, uh, we, want to, we want to find the eigenvectors that give us this. So we know, then, that minus a over 2 minus a over 2, I'm going with the first one first, minus e, uh, a, a, minus a over 2, minus a over 2, times a, b equals 0 is our, is our eigenvalue equation, or eigenvector equation. And well, what is this? I can factor out an a. I've got all sorts of stuff. This is a times minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, a, b equals 0, 0. And OK, this is actually, uh, I mean, at this point, it's kind of pointless to go through. You can see what the answer is going to be. a equals minus b, or a equals plus b, rather. Uh, and so that means that we have an eigenvector that is 1, 1, which gives us eigenvalue. Uh, we said this was for a over 2. And we could do the exact same calculation if we wanted to. Doing the, so uh, let's see, I should, I should add this to my list over here just to keep this running. Keep our running tally going. So remember that 1, 1 was coming from the middle section of this matrix. Uh, zeros on either end because we sort of shrank our matrix. So we've got that. We've also got 0, 1, 1, 0, which has an eigenvalue of plus a over 2. And while I'm at it, I want to have these normalized. So I'm going to go ahead and say 1 over square root of 2 times this thing. You can normalize it in your head if you want to, but that's the normalization we're going to have. Um, that's my a over 2. And then finally, the other piece we have is going through the exact same thing, except making this um, a minus, minus, minus 3a over 2, and minus, minus 3a over 2. What is a over 2 minus minus 3 over 2? Well, it's plus. It comes out to be plus 1 in each one of these cases. And if we do that, if we have plus 1 and plus 1, again, you can immediately see what the eigenvector is going to be. 1 minus 1, or any, any multiple of that, is the eigenvector, is going to have eigenvalue minus 3a over 2. That's our story, that 1 minus 1. And so again, promoting that over here to being a full 4 by 4 matrix eigenvector, That'll give me 0, 1, minus 1, 0. And I'm going to normalize again 1 over square root of 2. And that one has eigenvalue negative. That one has eigenvalue negative 3a over 2 as our last eigenvector and eigenvalue pair. So we've got now the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this. And you may say, huh, that's interesting. It's kind of curious that we've got three eigenvectors, three eigenstates of this Hamiltonian that all have the exact same eigenvalue, and one that has a different eigenvalue, a lower one, assuming our interaction was positive A, or our A was positive, uh, then this is a lower energy. This is the ground state of the system. 
There's no, it's not actually a coincidence at all that we've got three of one and one of the other. And that goes into the further thing of the idea of addition of spins. We're not going to talk about that right now, but in general, we will end up finding that these three guys together form a spin one system. This one forms a spin zero system, and it's no coincidence that if you're combining two spin one half particles, you can add them up to either give one or zero. And these come out to be the anti-symmetric combination here comes out to be the zero is an interesting fact that there's a combination of the two that where the two are not where we've got the same state for each one, but it's still there. In fact, let me write out the ket version of this just so we can see how these play out. My three a over two states. In ket form, if I will, if we want to write these out, my a over two states are going to be, and I'm going to use our shorthand notation that I didn't really refer to earlier in detail, but uh, the three a over two states are going to be the plus z, plus z state. That's the one that before I referred to as plus z for particle one and plus z for particle two. The, and I'll go ahead and put these in order, one over square root of two times plus z minus z plus minus z plus z. And finally, the minus z minus z state. Those are the three states in terms of kets that have eigenvalue a over two. And the other one, minus three a over two, there's only one of those, and we can write it as one over square root of two, plus z minus z minus minus z plus z. So this is an interesting fact that putting these pieces together, we find that there's one way of combining the two opposite spin states. If the spins both go the same way, those are definitely spin one and, and with this eigenvalue. But we see that there's one way of combining, one relative phase of this and this that gives us a plus a over two spin, and there's the other one, combining this and this, equal portions each way, but just a different phase factor, that gives us a spin zero, that gives us this lower thing. We'll see, you'll, we'll see later in class why, we, why I'm referring to these as spin one and this as spin zero, but that's the deal for now. That's where we're going with this, and it all came from finding the matrix form of this Hamiltonian and doing standard linear algebra tricks to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And that is the end of this particular little example.